If you're watching this video, it most likely means I've been lying to you, and for a long time. Hi, my name is Dr. Doi, and one way or another you've stumbled across my little slice of YouTube here. Normally I'm uploading daily fighting game videos here, but today's a special exception because of something I've said in a previous video that I felt the need to address here. How many people have seen the Fox and was that too old? Did I make, did I make a reference to too old? Why is this is not a review show about the Fox and the Hound? But, I mean, if this gets to 10,000 likes, I will upload a review of the Fox and the Hound. The truth is, at the time, when I brought up the Fox and the Hound and hitting 10,000 likes, I never saw it as an actual, real possibility. I mean, the movie was released in the 1980s. I wasn't even sure if anybody even knew of the movie's existence. But sure enough, the people that watched that video met an insane like goal and wanted to see the review actually happen. Now, this is uh, going to be difficult to say, but the truth is, I didn't even own the Fox and the Hound when I made that statement or plan on buying it at all. I, in fact, I was ready to move on and just pretend like this whole thing never happened. But the truth has a funny way of trying to find the light, and uh, it did so in your guys' comments. It was on the streams, it was on all the newest videos, and, and you know what? I think it's time to admit I was a coward. I couldn't go back and face the trauma of my childhood. This movie hurt me as a kid. But just for you guys, I think I'd be willing to watch The Fox and the Hound just one more time. Whew, you know, now that we're finally doing this, I, 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 I'm not gonna lie, I feel a lot better. <laughs> Woo! All right, so first things first, spoiler warning. <laughs> this is gonna get into some of the nitty gritty details about The Fox and the Hound. I don't think we're gonna go over the whole movie here. It's not really important to the overall review, but if you wanted to watch The Fox and the Hound on your own, uh, the best ways to do that, I think, are it's available on Disney Plus, or you can buy it or rent it here on YouTube. So those are also two very good options. But with all of that out of the way, let's finally kick off the Fox and the Hound movie review. So anyway, the movie opens on our main character, Todd, the Fox, and of course his mother's right alongside him and we can hear some, you know, commotion going on on the other side. Um, anyway, uh, his mother dies. Mother dies instantly. It's a, it's a frame one kill. Probably, probably one of the, oh my God, dude, this movie, this movie's ridiculous. The mom dies for frame one. But to be fair, I don't know if this makes this more sad or less sad, but Todd doesn't seem to remember his mother all too much and is pretty much set up with a new foster parent as quickly as possible thanks to some kind animals. This is a big emotional bond for the first half of the movie and it's paid off a little bit later in another scene, but... <laughs> We'll get to that when we get to that. Anyway, Todd's new neighbor happens to be a hunter who's bringing home a new hunting dog on the same day that Todd finds his new home, and this dog is named Copper. Yeah, you guys getting that title now? There's gonna be a fox and hound in this movie, respectively. I know, get hyped. It's gonna be pretty cool. Seriously, though, the relationship between Copper and Todd is the core of the movie, as the theme of the movie is friendship, and whether or not it can actually be strong enough to last forever in the face of things like societal pressure, growing apart, time apart, things like that. And the movie chose to do this by making the characters a tracking dog and a fox, two animals that probably will not be best of friends just based off what they do. But with that, all of the major pieces for the first half of the movie are in place, so now we start getting scenes of the friendship between Copper and Todd actually starting to form. It seems like them playing, talking, etc, etc, until eventually that divide starts to form when Todd goes over there, annoys the owner, owner tries to kill him, very reasonable response, and with that, Copper's locked up so he can't really go see Todd anymore. They're already spending less and less time together until hunting season comes around during the winter, and of course, Copper goes with his owner to actually go and hunt. This serves as a massive piece of time for both of our characters to grow up, so by the time Copper and Todd meet again, they are both fully grown adults. Todd's all about trying to reconnect and become friends again, but Copper is a bit more hesitant, mostly because I think he's been killing foxes the entire time he's been away, so I can see how that could be a bit awkward for him. And also warns Todd that if he stays around too long, he might wake up the other dog that Copper lives with, who uh, is really not a fan of foxes at all. Of course, that dog does eventually wake up, and a big chase for Todd eventually ensues. Skipping ahead a bit, Todd is eventually found by Copper, who again says, Todd, I really don't want to see you die, and spares him and leads the hunter off his trail. Unfortunately, the other dog finds Todd after being spared and is not so generous and chases Todd on a railway, where that older dog is eventually hit by a train, plummeting off a mountainside, hitting multiple rocks on the way down, and ending up like future Gohan in a puddle. Now, you'll be surprised to hear this, but he only breaks a leg in this scene. To be honest, as a kid, I didn't remember him living this, so I went and looked it up, and apparently he was supposed to die in the original book, but I guess the purpose of the scene is good enough. Basically, Copper feeling he's sense of regret for letting Todd go, now hates Todd just like the other dog, and this friendship is officially over with. Once things settle down a bit, both are back at their house. The old woman that took Todd in and raised her realized it's probably not safe for him to be around now, so we get one of the saddest scenes in the entire movie as she wakes Todd up from a nap, drives him out into the middle of a forest, and leaves him there. Don't look back. Don't look back. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. 
Why? At this point, basically, it's just a coming of age story for Todd. He meets a girl fox, things like that, grows up, learns how to be a fox, etc., etc. Until eventually, at the very end of the movie, again, Copper and the Hunter have decided to come and try to kill Todd and almost accomplish it until the very last character on this poster shows up. That's right, the big, deadly looking bear. This guy shows up and just starts absolutely rocking the Hunter and Copper, who's fighting for the Hunter's life at this point. And Todd, having finally made his escape from the Hunters, looks back, sees his old friend in trouble, and decides he has to help out. At this point, you can probably tell we're getting set up for the second big sad scene of the entire movie. So as Todd is helping him out, unfortunately during the battle between Todd and the bear, they both fall off a waterfall, and while Todd is okay, not dead, he is really injured. Copper finds him like this, and quickly behind Copper is the Hunter who pulls a gun on Todd. Now remember, at this point, I don't know why it's so personal. All the dog did was break a leg get, by getting hit by a train. Copper seeing his old friend in this state and just realizing that Todd did just save them from a bear, he does decide to use his body to protect Todd from being shot, after which the hunter finally comes to his senses and leaves Todd alone and takes Copper with him. The two friends share one last look, a nod, and that's probably the last they'll ever see of each other. The movie later goes on to end with Copper resting in his doghouse, remembering back to the days where he first met Todd and they said they'll be friends forever. The camera slowly pans out to reveal Todd looking over his old home and best friend and the movie comes to an end leaving us with the message that some friendships are strong enough to last a lifetime even if they do change <laughs> Overall, it's still a really good movie, and due to the medium it was presented in being 2D animation, it still looks incredible. I mean, you could show this movie to a kid now, and I don't think they'd think it was as old as it is. I'm gonna be honest, if you're an adult, I don't think this movie's going to teach you things that you don't already know, but it's a good movie for kids presented well enough, and it is pretty sad. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments, have you guys actually watched The Fox and the Hound, or do you wanna watch The Fox and the Hound? I don't know. Again, it is available on like streaming services and YouTube now. But other than that, I'm gonna be getting out of here. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Leave a like if you like Fox and the Hound, uh, subscribe uh, if you like fighting. I don't know. I I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> Happy April 1st.